So I'm actually gonna fly it for a second and then you get back. You always, always wanna have the controller on before you put in the batteries. And if it makes that sound, you have to lower this to the bottom. So there it is, it's on. And then you need to plug in the Phantom. Always have the transmitter on before you plug in a battery. And before you, when you're done, always unplug the battery before you turn off the transmitter. So it'll make a sound. And this battery case, like I said earlier, is hard to fit stuff in there. But there we go, now it's in. And then it has blinking lights. And these blinking lights are the way the Phantom tr uh, communicates with you what's really going on, okay? And so those, uh, this yellow one means that it's in Addy mode. The red ones mean that it's trying to get GPS connection and trying to find at least six GPS satellites in order to fly. I mean, I don't have a, a GoPro in there at the moment, but we're gonna close this so nothing falls off. Um, check the compass is, is plugged in correctly. There's an antenna that can just hand, hang there. You always also want to make sure that the IMU, which is the brain, the NASA, warms up. If it's cold, it will malfunction. And that's what I've been told. You give it actually a couple of minutes to warm up. So, while it's, it doesn't have the red anymore, which means it's ready to fly. And if I turn it to GPS on here, it now has a green blink in there, which means that it's in GPS mode. Meaning that when it hovers, it'll just try to stay in the exact same spot and it won't have momentum. So if you're going like this and you let go, it'll try to stay in the same spot. In Addy mode, momentum will just let it float and float and float and you can kind of bring it back, but it will still stay level in both modes. So let's fly this. I have it in, I don't want to put it in home lock or course lock. Home lock only works 10 meters away. That's a whole other thing, learn about that. I'm gonna fly it in GPS to start with and you can switch these at any time. The off course lock, home lock, you can sort of switch it from the controller and GPS and add it, you can switch it straight anytime in the controller. You don't have to like come back, land it and start over again. Landing is also a little bit more tricky and difficult. Um, and you do wanna, like I said, MQX to start with to get good at the flying type thing. You also don't want to uh, start it and just kind of barely lift off because it may just tilt over and then you're right next to the ground and the propellers get smashed up. So kind of have a decent takeoff when you t take off. And we, to start it off, you need to push the controllers in together and it has an automatic turn off. So if, it, if I don't lift it off in a couple, in just a little bit, it'll just turn off. But I'm gonna lift it off. It should just stay there in one spot, and if it doesn't stay there when you have your controls just uh, default, then there is a problem with the uh, called ICU or the IMU is yeah. Has, so it may have got a ding in it, and you may need to recalibrate it in order to tell with software uh, from the company to lift the lift the brain, the nozzle, the I, whatever the IMU. I might be getting IMU and ICU mixed up, but to let it know what really is level. So it's, it shouldn't be going to the side right now, but it is, which means I need to recalibrate it. But that's not a big deal. It, after you fly the MQX, this seems like easy, easy at going a little bit to the right or left. So I'm gonna switch to Addy mode, and that also lets you fly faster. So there it goes but uh, don't get too crazy with it when you're starting off and come to places like this with a big open field. All right, hey, I lost my video uh, helper and so I'm gonna finish it up talking into my car. And because this is just mainly about the content and what I'm saying anyways, it doesn't really matter if you can see me that great. All right, here's another thing is getting the, wow, it's such a mess, getting them all, transporting that stuff. It's just kind of a mess. That's one thing. And then we've got these controllers. 
I was told the D5, DX5 was decent, the DX6i is even much better, and I've tried using it and it really is a lot better. Here you can see the battery charger, this is the battery charger, this is the MQX, I've got a GoPro, I've got the charger for the MQX batteries right here. All right, hey, when doing the FPView thing, actually some places require that you have a spotter to always have visual with it anyways, which kind of reduces the whole, like, the reason for doing it all. Like I said earlier, everything's illegal, pretty much anything you do in life is illegal. There are lights on the Phantom which make this easy, kind of easy to fly at night. Not that it's like as easy during the day, but they act, the lights actually help during the day as well when you're flying around in the air and you need to know which way is the front and which way is the back. You have green and red lights. When you're flying the MQX, sometimes you're about to crash into something. It doesn't really injure anything, but like you, do, you want to just cut the power to the controller, to the fan, so that the propeller stops spinning. Just cut them real fast and just let it take the fall. That's, you know, be smart about it. Don't just do that every time you're about to crash, but that is better so that it just kind of floats to the ground, just falls lightly to the ground instead of, <laughs> look at all those clothes. Instead of spins and hits it really hard with the propellers. Okay, we're coming to the very end. This is the front of the Phantom, right here. And there's a light on the back so that you can always see it. It is easy to fly with the Phantom going away from you, but very hard to c when the Phantom is coming towards you because left is right and right is left. When it's going away, left is left and right is right. When flying around up in the air, it's very easy to get disorientated. Does this just disorientate you or does it make you sick? Anyways, it's very easy to quickly become disorientated. So you may feel very confident and then all of a sudden you crash. So especially if it goes up and over you and then in a matter of a second, um, it's going the reverse direction and left is left, left is right and right is left. And you are just so used to the controls being one way and then all of a sudden it gets turned around and it's the other direction. These, like I say, are much easier to fly than this little guy right here. Obviously, windy days are much more difficult to fly than not windy days. And it's very difficult to fly the MQX on a windy day outside. It's actually pretty easy to fly inside and where there's no wind. And my last thoughts are, there are just a lot of things I learned in the last one week, maybe even less than one week. I've gotten into it. I could barely get the MQX off of the ground on the first night. There was a big group of us that tried. We couldn't even do it. We, were, we didn't know what was going on and if we were doing it wrong. And then the next day I could kind of fly and the next day it was twice as good as the day before. And then, I mean, just got way, way better just every day of flying that so that when I got the Phantom on like the third or fourth day, I could actually fly it pretty decently because it's much easier to fly than the MQX. So within the matter of a week, I think I am decently competent where I can get it up in the air, not do very many fancy maneuvers, but you don't want to fly it too fast when you are doing video anyways. So you just kind of want to do simple, easy maneuvers, kind of far off the ground. And as I get good at doing that and have a lot more experience, maybe I can do some more risky type things. In fact, I think there's a few of us that are looking into doing the first person view later down the line and maybe even doing some sort of racing type things and just having funs and sports type things. But for now, one week into it, I think it's gone pretty well and I have learned a lot and I am sharing all this with you. It's a long video, I understand that, but you don't have, I, you don't understand how many hours, dozens of hours learning about this stuff as I edit, as I, as I just straight up YouTube watching and reading things. And there is so much to learn and I still have lots and lots of questions. I still don't know how to put together the first person view. I don't know which is the best gimbal. Um, I still don't know how to fly in when it's facing me as opposed to facing the other direction. Um, and, and I'm not the best flyer and I don't, I haven't got, solved the problem where there's just not that much vibration and shake and I'm getting amazing video. But this is one week of learning and there's about 200 points here and I'll probably put them in the description. And um, subscribe 
because you'll get to see some of my future flights and probably some future crashes and just uh, me using them in other videos, okay? So, and they're just random videos and a lot of content that I hope you, you are enjoying. And that's my video. This is 200 plus things that you should know about the DJI Phantom and quadcopters. Please share this with anyone that you think may be interested in quadcopters. Not because this is the most, I am the most proficient of sources, but because this is the best amount of beginner information in a short package like this. And it is short because I pumped in a ton of stuff.